We're going to graph y equal the absolute value of x minus 2. You should know the basic shape of this. Anytime you have, some, have an absolute value, the basic shape is a v. So we know our final graph will look something like a v. If there's a negative in front, maybe it opens down. But this is the basic shape. So we can do this several different ways. We can always, always, always plot points and plot enough points to get the basic shape. Or we can think about our parent function and we can shift our graph. Um, let's go ahead and just look at a few points just to kind of get you going that way. Um, let's look at the x-intercept. To find the x-intercept, we let y equal to z, set y equal to zero. So we get zero equals the absolute value of x minus two. Okay. We know absolute value represents distance on a number line from zero. So this means the distance between x minus 2 and 0 is 0. If you're on a number line, you're 0. You're right here. So that means my stuff in absolute values, x minus 2, is equal to 0. So x is 2. So my x-intercept is the point 2, comma, 0. Let's find the y-intercept. To find the y-intercept, we are going to set x equal to 0. So y equals the absolute value of 0 minus 2. And this is y equals the absolute value of negative 2. We know absolute value, again, is a distance between 0 and whatever is in here on a number line. So if I look at my number line, and here's negative 2, the distance is 2 away from 0. So y is equal to positive 2. We also know that absolute value makes whatever is in the absolute value bars non-negative. So there's that as well. So we have a y-intercept of 0, 2. We can just try to plot a few more points and see what we get. So let me go ahead and put these in a table. So we have 2, 0, 0, 2. Let's scroll down just a little bit. Okay, just started plotting a little bit. So I have some points. I can do 2, 0. So 1, 2, 0. I can plot 0, 2. Okay, so at this point, it's not immediately obvious what's happening. So I can plot some more points. My graph was y equal absolute x minus 2. So I can just, you know, try different points. What about plugging in 3? So that means I have y equal the absolute value of 3 minus 2, which is the absolute value of 1, which is 1. So I can plot the point 3, 1. 1, 2, 3, 1. What if I put in positive 1? y equal 1 minus 2 in absolute values. That's the absolute value of negative 1, which is positive 1. Okay. We're starting to see the v. Let's just do a couple more just to be sure. So what if I put in negative 1? Negative 1 minus 2. Well, that's the absolute value of negative 3, which is positive 3. Okay. What if I put in, I don't know, 4? If I put in 4, I get y equal to the absolute value of 4 minus 2, which is the absolute value of 2, which is 2. So we can definitely see the v. So I'm going to go ahead and connect these in a straight line. I'm going to do my very best. This is straight. I'm not real good with this. Okay, there's one side of it. Okay, these are off a little bit, but just use your imagination. Okay, this one's off a little bit. So that's your graph of y equal absolute x. Uh, that y equal the absolute value of x minus 2. Okay, I'm going to show you how to graph it um, a couple different ways. We go ahead and um, turn the page to a new page. So here's another way to graph y equal the absolute value of x minus 2. We can see that this looks very similar to y equal absolute x. 
So we have actually shifted y equal absolute x how? Well, instead of x, we've replaced x with x minus 2. So we know that's going to be a shift to the left or right. Okay, And remember the little rule that says insiders lie, outsiders tell the truth? So it's inside. So we know normally a minus tells us to go to the left. So now we're going to shift this two units to the right. So let's start with our parent function. If I have y equal absolute x, I have, I'm just going to put in my standard points, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. That's really crooked. Okay. So if I put a negative 2 into this one, I get the absolute value of negative 2. I get positive 2. If I put absolute value of negative 1, I get positive 1. The absolute value of 0 is 0. The absolute value of 1 is 1. The absolute value of 2 is 2, so I can plot these points. Okay, so I can plot negative 2, let me do it in blue. Negative 2, positive 2, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2. And I can keep going, but we see the V, right? So let me graph it again. No more flattening. So this, the blue one, is y equal the absolute value of x. But if we look at this, if we talk about shifting it, we see we will shift it two units to the right. So that means every single point here is going to be taken and shifted two units to the right. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. Do you see the new B? Okay, this middle one's off a little bit. Okay, a lot actually. Okay, so this red one is Y equal the absolute value of X minus 2. Um, can you see the domain and range of the red one? You see that if I continue the red graph on forever, I can plug in any x value I want. So the domain will be all real numbers. And the range tells us what y values the graph will attain. If we look at the red graph, we see that there's no y values below the x-axis. So we're not going to have any negative y's. We do get y equals 0. And if we continue this on forever, we're going to hit every positive y value. So the range is 0 to infinity. Now, I do get 0, so I'm going to include it. Remember, you put a bracket if you're going to include it. And infinity never gets a bracket because it's not really a number. Okay. And let me show you one more way to graph this. I'm going to new page. Okay. This is the coolest one, I think. So, what if I graph y equal x minus 2? Do y'all see that this guy right here is a line? The slope is 1, because it looks like this. It's in this form. y equal mx plus b. The slope is 1. m is 1. And your b is negative 2. That means the y-intercept is the point 0, negative 2. So I can plot this.
Okay, clearly not to scale, but. Okay, so I'm just gonna plot y equal x minus two. I know that's a line. I'm gonna start with this intercept, zero, negative two. And this slope tells me to go up one over one, right? Rise over run. So it's one over one, or negative one over negative one. So up one, right one. Up one, right one. Again, this one's off a little bit too. Okay, up one, right one. Up one, right one. Up one, right one, and so on. I can also go down one, left one. And I get this line. I'm gonna graph it for you. Okay, so I missed this guy. Okay, you get the idea. It's a little hard to graph with the, let me try that again. It really is hard to graph with this pen. I can't quite tell exactly where it's going to line up, so oh, that's even worse. <laughs> try it one more time. Okay, well, that's just going to have to be good, though. Okay, so this is supposed to be the line y equal x minus 2. Okay, but we weren't supposed to graph that. We were supposed to graph the absolute value of that. Well, what is absolute value? Absolute value is the distance between zero and whatever is in those absolute value um, bars on a number line. What really ends up happening is we make everything non-negative because we can't have a, a negative distance. We can have a distance of zero or we can have a distance of a positive number. So what we're really doing is we're gonna keep this side of my picture, but all of these negative values right here we won't be able to use. We're going to have to change them. So if you look at this, your y value here, this is the point 1, negative 1. Your y value is negative, so we're going to have to flip it up and make it positive. This y value was 0, negative 2. The absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2. We're like flipping it up and making it positive. So we're taking all of these y values. Remember your definition of absolute value? is negative x if x is negative, and positive x if x is positive. So I'm taking all of the negatives, so like negative of negative two, and that became positive two. So we're just taking all of these and flipping them up. So my new graph of absolute value of x minus two, actually it's gonna look, and this one's a little bit low. Actually looks like this. That's y equal absolute value of x minus 2. So there's three different ways to get the same graph.